two. If you guys didn't join us last week, we had an excellent kickoff uh, last Saturday, and we're joining, jumping right into our normal weekly schedule now. I am Artistic Bev at Artistic Bev on Twitter, joined by. And I'm uh, at Nawo Intent on Twitter. I'm Intent, a uh, new voice for this week. And it's good to have you, honestly. I'm super excited for this week. We had so many good matches, so many breakout, you know, um, you know, matches for these players in that week one, getting their feet wet. And now we're jumping into probably a keystone match tonight. Yeah, on on this stream, we actually have both of the uh, 2-0 versus 2-0 sets that uh, I saw slated to be played. So I'm excited to see who is coming into week three as a 3-0 team or potentially a 4-0 team. And uh, who's taking some of their first L's? Yeah, and our first match coming up will be CMU versus Davenport, both 2-0 teams. Yeah, um, kind of blew their competition out of the water this first week. Um, this is going to be a match you're going to want to see for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, something that uh, I wouldn't try and sleep on for a major bracket, major sort of league like this, is week two is significantly different than week one for one reason. We've got VODs now. I want to see what kind of studying and preparing these teams have done specifically to counter the other team's strategies and sort of their individual players' habits and play styles preemptively. That's a that's a really valid point. I like that a lot. Uh, these players, you know, you, you see them every Tuesday or in this case, uh, Saturday, coming in here, uh, trying so hard, and you see them playing the game and you only see that. What you don't see is these players are are dedicated to this game for sure. I guarantee you, most, if not all of these teams have sat down in Discord or over Zoom or whatever and studied their matches and other people's matches coming into this week. So as as much reconnaissance has been done, these are some these are some teams that are ready to go tonight. Yeah, we have CMU uh, with quite the lineup. Uh, they've got Superhero on the Fox, Prod on Wii Fit Trainer, Calm on Rob, Has on Bowser, and Silent B on Ganon. There's a few big bodies in that roster. Quite a few early kills to be had. Yeah, absolutely. CMU, I'd like to talk about that roster while we have it. While we have him talking about it right now, um, they were they were uh, they had to sub in their. Uh, substitute in Silent Bean last week due to a uh, freak ankle injury from their team captain, uh, Superhero. But I am told that he is here tonight and he will be competing. So that's all the more fire for these chips tonight. On the flip <laughs> side, though, we do have Davenport coming to uh, with, a, with a very strong week one. Could, uh, you know, be the foil for these uh, these CMU uh, players, yeah, no. On the Davenport side, you know, I was talking about potential vods to study. Well, Davenport's got somebody with a lot of vods to take a look at. <laughs> uh, Davenport's led by a PGR player in Best Nest, but that's not all they have. They have plenty of other powerful players with Exodus on Cloud, who had a great week one. I've heard. Uh, Smithers on the K rule, Vengeance on Pichu, and Pow Pow on my main Joker. Yeah, last week I got the pleasure of commentating a Davenport set, um, and they uh, they really they really impressed. Um, not because not so much because of their you know flagship player Best Nest, which in the match that I watched he didn't wasn't even a factor. He didn't even get down to him. I saw Smithers on the K rule just melt stocks, as well as Exodus, like you said, had a breakout night. So those are two players that maybe if you're not familiar with, you'll really want to be watching. And here we are. We've got the arena open. DPU and CMU 2-0 right now. This is this is really important to see who takes the first L. 
Yeah, and it looks like going right into this, we have CMU leading with their Bowser and DPU right on time with Exodus's Cloud. Let's see how this goes. Three, two, one, go! All right, and it looks like we are starting off with Palum. Interesting pick with the Bowser. Uh, my data suggests usually he'll go with the uh, Rob, but uh, maybe not tonight. Yeah, Bowser, excellent character pick. And it looks like it's in this uh, starting volley. It's going very well for him. Uh, quite the little lead racked up. That was a good little timing mix up on Exodus' landing, though. Starting out this first hit of the day. Yeah, right off the bat, uh, Collins Bowser getting quite a bit of damage. Um, and uh, looking to take this first stock early for his team. Yeah, Exodus uh, just a couple seconds ago, unfortunately burning that limit without much value. Ooh, that wind box. Oh, that is definitely a problem for Cloud at times. But Col or, uh, Exodus able to make it back to ledge, try and get back into this and maintain that stock. But as we're seeing, Exodus with limit off stage here, opts to go high, might get punished for it. He calls out, he calls out the shield, gets the Koopa Claw, and takes the first stock. Column. Yeah, that's huge. The most important thing I would say in these crew battles is stock maintenance. Even more important than sealing out stocks is making sure yours don't go down the drain. Yeah, here we see Exodus really trying to rally, um, get that limit online. Maybe a cross slash coming on. Um, really need something to kill right now because Bowser is a character that definitely can kill early and can just avalanche stocks once he gets ahead. Yeah, and you already see it. 70% nothing to scoff at in terms of extra credit. Uh, Exodus kind of letting Calm get away with uh, just landing onto stage there. All right, but Exodus sending Calm off stage, missing the cross splash. Unfortunate. Just needs to take a breath. All he needs is this stock. Yeah, this is the first game going into this series, this crew battle between these two teams. Exodus cannot get shook right off the bat. And there we see it, securing that kill, reading the roll, gets the Omni Slash, and he's in a lot better position than he was, say, 30 seconds ago. Yeah, just a good little bait with the dash in, dash out. Oh, and, here we see Koopa uh, Club again, though. Yeah, it's hard to play around Bowser with both the command grab and the fire breath, which chunks shield so hard. Column is putting on so much pressure right now. He's feeling he's feeling like an absolute bully in this match right now. That forward air is gonna seal that stock though. I was about to say Exodus managing to get in the call out of the corner, but there's Column with that landing forward air, taking that stock once again. Now Exodus starting to get something started with these side beats. Little bit of shield pressure, little bit of stagger. All right, both players just kind of using their larger hitboxes, trying to feel out like, how can I poke into this range without just getting smacked myself? That's gonna be a finishing touch out of shield though. Great punish, stuff. That is actually what he needed right now. This is an even game suddenly, with Colum being ahead the majority of the game prior to this, if not all of it. Yeah, Exodus starting to stack it up a little bit now. The back air into the cross slash. Exodus taking the lead back for the first time in this game. That Koopa Claw is so dangerous right now. You yeah. know Colum's just waiting for another shield. It's not gonna die yet. I cannot another understate. One important this last stock is that limit still not quite gonna kill bowser's a heavy heavy boy limit uh, you know if limit gets online here oh yeah. and the down smash catches him he just reached right through that side b with that big old claw similar to wolf down smash and that's gonna kill super early leading CMU off to an early lead. And we can see maybe this Bowser even takes another stock or two and it starts to snowball. DPU, not in the best spot, not in the worst spot. Still very doable from their side.
Yeah, it, it, all that matters right now is how they answer back and who they decide to throw in against this Bowser. I could see Smithers coming in right now, another heavy, maybe trying to outlive Bowser. Little bit of power there too. That was big though, Exodus going out early. Um, he was a power player in week one and it seemed like he was a very even match for Column's Bowser, but Column able to live to a very high percent in that last stock. And the I feel like the longer you live into your last stock, the more valuable it is to win in the end because you get all that percent back. You get a free stock because of that. You know what yeah, I mean? It, it's not just that Bowser gets to keep his stock going into next game. It's that he took 130 that doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, exactly. And he gets the opportunity to strengthen the lead for CMU going into this second game. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it cannot be underestimated how important it is to especially take that first game, but make sure those lingering stocks just get value consistently. And Bowser's going to be a character in the lead that can make sure that at worst can try and just jank someone out with the koopa claw flying off the stage if i recall unless he dies first does he die first in this game though i believe he dies first okay i, I might be mistaken as well that is a, that yeah. is something to look out for but you know i feel like the heavy characters get so much more out of tanking that last stock going into another game just because they live so much longer and are so much more dangerous when you when you don't want to lose a stock when you're already behind yeah, on the dpu side what you've got to be thinking in this situation is who on this squad can take this stock without losing one of their own and i look like stop the bleeding before it starts yeah it looks like i called it right too they are sending in their heavy being smithers smithers along with exodus might i add had an excellent week one a great start to the season and i'm sure he's hoping to continue that success but right now column's looking pretty unstoppable yeah uh i have to say like these these super heavy mirrors can be crazy explosive oh, is, wait wait what well, uh, is uh cmu all using the same tag okay was that has then Okay, in that in that case, okay. this is has. Little 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 bit of update. Column probably going to Rob still, but that was has actually tanking that stock at the end there for his team going into this uh, game two. Yeah, that does make sense. CMU all on the same switch. They're all going to be under the the column tag there. Yeah, that makes sense. I kind of thought the same thing because something similar happened last week. Uh, with, uh, I think, Oakland, but I, I wasn't quite sure, so I kind of just ran with it. Oh, but... Interesting choice from Smithers here. Not opting for the uh, the the main K rule here, but uh, maybe a little fringe character action here. Yeah, this is a knowledge check for sure. Piranha Plant, quite the uncommon character, but also a tournament threat at times with a lot of sneaky setups. And I do believe we are going to be, after that first game, which we had a neutral start in, uh, we are going to be waiting for 30 seconds where at 6.30 we will commence this match. All right. Interesting that uh, Smithers would choose the FD counter pick while wow, has just dashing directly into that jab. No fear at all. Oh, oh my goodness! Stop going! Oh my god! Oh my goodness! If you're DPU, you cannot let that happen to you right now. That yeah, is. Oh that. my goodness! The way the way he abused uh, tough guy right there, getting through that rapid jab right at the beginning. I knew something terrible was going to happen, and has right now is on a tear. Yeah, forty nine percent already on the second stock has prepared to run all the way through a whole what second a person Koopa Claw. on the Davenport team. That oh. down's barely missing that neutral getup. Oh my god. 
Okay, Smithers needs to find a way to stop this bleeding and fast. Yeah, this can get very easily out of hand against Bowser. And the way that has has been playing right now uh, lends itself to believe that he may take another stop. Yeah, when you, when you think heavy, you don't usually think fast on the ground running at your face. But... Smithers able to send out Bowser with that back air, only losing one stock. Not the worst of scenarios as long as Smithers can make it back on whoever comes in on this CMU side. Yeah, uh, it's funnily enough, Piranha Plant, we, we were expecting a battle of heavies, and we did end up getting a ba battle of heavies. Uh, Piranha Plant is a heavier character. Apparently, he's packing more than just dirt in that pot. Yeah, technically speaking... You know, Piranha Plant's a, a bigger boy than you'd think. <laughs> yeah, no, but man, it cannot be understated how huge that extra stock from Haz is. Getting four for the price of his three. Yeah, lots of lots of value coming out for uh, Team CMU in the play with Haz there on the Bowser. I'm interested to see who we uh, who we decide to. Uh, take out the piranha plant with though yeah and like i was saying on on Haz's part when you uh when you see bowser and you think of a, a heavy character you usually don't think of fast ground speed intimidating rush down options but has went all in on piranha plant who's a more zony character with uh insufficient get off of me tools to kind of deal with the aggression that he was laying down and you saw what happened within i want to say like 10 seconds of the match actually starting a whole stock was gone it it was it was three reads directly in a row in a row one of them being an f smash at ledge and you know that's going to kill anyone on this roster that's such a powerful move and it was such a a ballsy play right off the bat that totally paid off but it looks like we are going to get the captain of cmu's roster right now in superhero yeah cmu apparently concurring that piranha plant can kind of struggle with these rushdown characters superhero having this fox in the in the bag going to see how it feels to just run at plant's face yeah, I I have the uh, I have an inkling of a feeling that uh, Fox has a very good matchup against Piranha Plant. Yeah, and that's not even mentioning that Fox has both a laser to deal range chip damage where uh, Piranha Plant can't exactly deal with it, and a reflector to deal with Piranha Plant's best move by far in Patui. Yeah, right off the bat, a really aggressive, non-neutral start coming out from Superhero. CMU really likes that type of offense I'm seeing. Yeah, CMU has elected to no thoughts, head empty. Let's see what you've got. Kind of run at people's faces and make them do the math. Yeah, so far it's paying off in dividends, though. Oh, for sure. Smithers forced all the way into this corner, kind of shoehorned into trying to throw Patui in the, off of ledge just to get back onto the stage from Superhero's aggression, and he never touches the ground as that up air takes his second stock, having only dealt 3%. This rushdown game plan paying off. Yeah, for sure, and it looks like Superhero has tons of matchup experience, too. The way he's just effortlessly gliding around Patui lends, my, lends me to believe that, uh, you know, he's played some very good Piranha Plants before. Yeah, Superhero playing from a very patient ledge trapping position there. Slightly back, just refusing to get hit by those forward airs off of the ledge that Smithers was going for. The footstool set up into the small confirm. Those are nasty. That's what I love to see in Smash Bros. Yeah, you can tell that Superhero is playing very confidently right now. He knows he's ahead, he knows his team's ahead, and he knows the matchup. That's, that's, those are dangerous combinations when you have a player like Superhero. Yeah, and you see Superhero just reminding Smithers, hey, I have this laser too. You can't run away from me. You have to hold all this as I roll behind, up smash you 
taking the stock and extending this lead. Yeah, with a very dominant three stock, might I add. Yeah, now CMU ahead of full three stocks. DPU probably has to start thinking about, like, when do we use best nest? When do we try and see if he can dig us out of this hole? And hopefully our remaining player can play the 3v3 or something, or the three stock v3 stock, something like that. Yeah, I'm, I, I would be hard pressed to say that uh, DPU might have to pull the best nest out right here. Superhero, possibly uh, CMU's best player, probably their captain in this situation i could see a captain versus captain uh battle right here yeah although something to be said maybe they want to use best ness as their anchor see if their remaining player can chip away at superhero before best ness has to try and reverse this unfortunate fate that dpu has found themselves in yeah and it's interesting to see because after after both of these teams had such an explosive week one, seeing Davenport on the downswing, you have to you have to think their mindset going into this. I don't know if they expected to be behind and just hemorrhaging stocks like this going into it. Yeah, and that's some of the beauty of Haz's Bowser play early. Like, not to underestimate what Superhero just did, but Paz was able to take three or, or four whole stocks for the price of his three. And now, Superhero, making sure he doesn't lose another one, you're off to a full person lead. Oogway. Who could that be? Yeah, I these, these ambiguous tags, or in case of CMU, the same tag, uh, can be a little misleading, but uh, we're we're definitely making it through. Um, I'm sure whoever they pick, it'll be easy to tell just by the remaining uh, characters on Davenport's roster. Yeah, it looks like. Yes, Best Nest there is it is. Yeah. Yes, and Best Nest has entered the arena. We have the Captain v Captain game that you've predicted. And Superhero, while being a uh, honorable mention for Michigan's PR, Best Ness is a PGR top 50 player in the entire world. Oh, Best Ness, forgetting, forgetting about the uh, 30 second start. Although both these players had three stocks, so I'm unsure if they couldn't just uh, run right at the beginning. Maybe they've uh, chosen the wrong stage counter. I do believe. I do believe the ruling is after the very first match of the series. I do believe we are going 30 seconds every match after that, no matter no matter the set count. Um, so we are going to be restarting that one. I like the aggression from Bestas right off the yeah. bat. He saw the he saw <laughs> the audacity to just run at him and dash attack. Yeah, he saw two of his teammates fall prey to the same non-neutral aggressive start, and he said, "Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll try that one," and and he did. But obviously, we're gonna get a restart, and it might not be uh, as fruitful. Yeah, I've often said there's something romantic about just running at your opponent and hitting them before the word game has even left the screen. <laughs> Sometimes you can use it as camouflage as well. <laughs> yeah. One, the the mix-up, let's mix-up. <laughs> Bestness and, here... and to flex the movement for this 30 seconds. Yeah. No, those, uh, those Psy Magnet B reverses are not easy. Not as easy as one would expect, especially with the jump cancels. Yeah, there's quite a bit of uh, strange, useful tech with Ness that he has at his command, and Best Ness knows it better than anybody. Yeah, as the tag, it's not lying. As as you would expect, this is probably the best Ness in the world, or at least one of. Especially yeah, North America. Time to go the extra... Yeah, at, at the very least, North America. Uh, superhero tried to go the extra mile with that jab, but still got punished out of shield. Best Ness perfectly patient in that situation. At Uppy had an interesting hitbox. 
Yeah, it looked like he used it originally just to get... Oh, and there we see the first stock coming out from Best Nest with the back air. Yeah, that back air scooping Superhero up as he tried to dash into the ledge, potentially catching the bad DI special. Oh no! Another stock! Oh my god! Best Nest is absolutely seconds. fired up right now. He just respawned! That's something that's really dangerous with Fox. He's such a glass cannon because his recovery is so exploitable, and Best Ness absolutely knows that in this situation. Going for the down air to punish that whiff jab? That's... Wow. Okay. <laughs> I just barely know what to say. He's just showing, like, the, the true caliber of player that he is. Yeah, that neutral air swat him away and that lead that cmu had that we were talking about earlier on yeah that's that's insane best nest was really really fired up in that match and if your cmu and your captain was not able to stop the tear that best nest went on that match you gotta you gotta be careful going into this match you have to keep a calm head and you know, you have to play your heart out, for one. Yeah, it's it's not often that uh, you have to play against a PGR player, I'd say. But uh, those are the do-or-die situations, for sure. And I'm sure that CMU is currently deliberating, like, Who which one send in? you can get a stock or two. As dominant as a victory that was for Best Ness, there is something to be said one, the matchup. Yeah. Ness, historically, has a better better time dealing with Fox's recovery, and we saw that almost every single stock. I'd also say that Ness is a character known for quick but stubby hitboxes, and his low mobility means that those hitboxes are specifically tailored to be incredible anti-aggro tools. And Fox, well, you don't need an introduction on that. <laughs> He's one of the most aggressive characters in the game for sure. Yes, absolutely. So if there's anything that CMU has to look forward to, it's a little bit better matchup spread going on from here against the Ness. Again, that might not matter. Best Ness is playing like a madman as we saw that last game. Yeah, it's something to be said. He's a PGR player who's playing like one. It looks like CMU has already uh, locked in their player going up next. We are dead even going into this next match. Both teams have six stocks two players left to fill and uh i'm i'm pumped up for this first match <laughs> this first match is so fire right now both these yeah. teams do not want to get that one in their losses section right now yeah no for sure i i gotta say cmu it's not looking great in this situation it's never over until it's over that was it's such a dominant performance. It's insanity to hear you say that, too, because the first two matches that CMU played, we were we were almost expecting a sweep from that point. Yeah. Oh, but... Obviously, obviously having a PGR player on your team is <laughs> is huge in this crew battle, especially a, a PGR player that I might add that is tailor-made and excels in crew battles. Yeah. This man's I a would, crew battle fiend. I would I would expect nothing less from Best Ness. <laughs> that was a good rhyme. <laughs> I, I try. I do my best. Now I've got bars. I do my best just like Ness. Ah, there we go. All right. <laughs> Nobody clip that ever. I don't want to hear that ever again. <laughs> uh, top 10 cringiest moments. Uh, yeet smash. It's already here. <laughs> <laughs>
can't believe my second ever yeet smash is going to be me cringy ing <laughs> my first ever yeet smash clip was me get getting absolutely rolled you've got you've got nothing nowhere but up to go by now yeah <laughs> i'm i'm thinking about it you know just like cmu after that uh absolutely dominant performance from best nest they've got nowhere else to go except up in this and it looks like with prod the we fit trainer selection uh they might be thinking like okay i have to cool down some of this fire take it a little bit slower see how maybe best uh, begins maybe to some deep breathing in this situation will help them yeah yeah, here we do. Oh we do God, see Prod. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Prod, right. Prod, Prod is another player that uh, had a tear of a first week. So uh, maybe not as outmatched as uh, one might feel. <laughs> best Nest <laughs> once again agreeing with me that there is something romantic about holding forward and hitting someone before it goes even left of green. <laughs> getting the 30 second rule we're gonna reset this game and have that 30 second buffer window you know the uh the fact that we've had two restarts going into the going in this in these matches um kind of makes me believe that you know the both these teams are playing very very uh aggressively and very passionately yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of pride going into this, uh, you know, this this crew battle with uh, Tech Chase Major League here. Yeah, no, it's definitely exciting stuff. All right, we're gonna get back into this with that 30 second buffer. It appears that we're on battlefield as Prod's uh, counter pick selection. He's gonna take a little little second. He's gonna plank type himself up i think one of my favorite mo type that sorry i think one of my favorite things about these uh crew battles thus far have been one watching players uh go to hit each other right away and then having to restart uh and look like fools but also the uh different poses and the different taunts that uh players do in the 30 seconds prior to their match yeah, uh, I think it's uh, hilarious that Best Nest twice went to hit someone, and the first reset just went like, oh, I'm going to flex some tech real quick. And then <laughs> in the first reset, he's like, all right, I'm a bad boy. I'm standing still. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, good oh air dodge getting out of here. With PK flash? Yeah, he, uh, he was doing that offstage last match against Superhero as well. Uh, kind of puts you in a bad position when you have to watch out for that PK flash, and you can get a pretty good punish after the fact, even if it does miss. All right, I we we missed it a couple seconds ago, but Bestness kind of wild for going for that double jump read up air, but catching that soccer ball attempt off stage and taking the stock with the forward air, only 64 damage to his name. Bestness is doing such a good job. It doesn't seem like he's winning neutral all that much, but once he does and he gets you off stage, he just is a fiend for these edge guards. It seems like every time he touches one of these CMU players, he's out for blood. Ooh, that good. late hit. Oh, he saved him. He's not done with him yet. <laughs> Prod, not able to get the deep breathing. Oh, <sighs> almost, almost just frame trapping into another kill. Best Ness has completely lapped Prod once again in percentage. PK Thunders just keep juggling this We Fit Trainer. We fit Trainers usually like to spend their time hanging on the ledger off stage, but not like this. Yeah, another dash attack going to kill here. Prod has to has to somehow take at least a stock here or dire straits for CMU. Yeah, no. If if Prod can't take this stock, I mean it's it's looking like it could just be curtains. Best Ness going to 9-0.
this team away. It's looking right now. That neutral air almost bouncing him off the stage. Sness still hasn't lost a stock. Yeah, very dominant position to be in if you're best Ness here. I hit this forward throw and the deep breathing. There's one. You gotta you gotta be able to sneak one in like did there. Going deep here. Able to get back. TK fire yeah. on the ledge. He got that yo-yo charge, but then got the buffered down tilt after instead of the second yo-yo. Really good bit of recovery there. Switch. That's gonna kill the drag down forward air into the up smash. And that's right. only two stocks left on Bessness. Yeah. He's taken six stocks, though. Yeah, no, Bessness. I mean, at least Prod showing that PGR players can bleed in that match. Hopefully, their last player from the CMU side, who I believe is Calm, the Rob player, able to bring this back against Bessness. Yeah, I, I'm thinking, judging by the tag at whose switch we're playing on right now, or we're viewing right now, um, Column will be the last player, Silent Bean, the sub for this team, technically still able to be in this match, but it's either one or the other at this point. Yeah, no, I mean, speaking from a purely matchup perspective, I don't think that Ganondorf is the character you want to be putting in front of a PGR player, but... <laughs> I don't know how comfortable Column feels on Rob against this character, or against Ness. I don't know if there's matchup experience. I don't know the background there. At this point, it doesn't matter what Column is uh, comfortable with facing. Uh, it's either it's do or die in this situation for Team CMU, possibly going to drop to a 2-1 status after this match. Yeah, something, something. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh, a little, a little bit of humor in this situation. You gotta yeah, love you, it. You yeah, gotta it keep like it CMU is in, Looks like CMU is going to be sending in Column against Best Nest, and Column is going to be getting, at, at the very least, a uh, a counter pick on stages. If you were Colum in this situation, he's going Rob, what stage do you think he's pick? My instincts say town and city or Kalos. You are wrong. We're going I'm to small so battlefield. So wrong. <laughs> Best Nest being a good boy, not uh, immediately attacking, losing his stock and uh, we're gonna get the 30 seconds, and once those expi once that expires, uh, we will be underway of game one tonight of Tech Chase Major League Week Two. Yeah. <laughs> Colin says no. Get get over there, just a little bit over. I want a, a neutral start at the least. If you're making me fight a PGR player, <laughs> give me my space. Yeah. I don't want to start in disadvantage. All right. Very patient, very neutral start for both of these players right now. Just feeling each other out, but best nest. Getting that first little interaction, getting about 30% off of it. Not that much, but in the scheme of things, that's going to end up being a problem for uh, Column if they both keep playing this passively. Yeah, yeah now even, even at this point, if they trade stocks one to one, that's still that's still towards DPU, and there we see it. Best yes. nest, only 16% on him, able to take Column's first stock. That is yeah. not a good look if you're CMU right now. I was gonna say, speaking of taking one stock, already happening, sub 20%. Column barely got to hit one move on Best Nest before he deleted an entire stock. Yeah, no, it seems like in this uh, in this era of playing on online, SNES has gotten quite a bit of Rob experience, I would imagine. Rob, well known for putting up high results in these uh, online locals and online majors. 
Oh, here we see a little bit of damage from Column trying to get that combo with the uh, side B, but not going to connect towards the end. And there we see some healing actually from Best Nest. Yeah, all of the damage that he got off of that combo, it's gone. Best Nest using the gyro, gets himself out of a little stickier situation. Column at 132% off stage. Okay, Column fighting his way off of the ledge for a second, but Best Nest jabbing him and putting him right back. Yeah, no, Best Nest saying you're not going to be able to just swing off the ledge twice against me. Gyro's on the ledge here. Column ops to roll on stage. It was quite the trap with both the Gyro and the up smash charge, but Column able to get around it. Yeah, Column not dying to the uh, PK Thunder into up air this time. Getting at 175 and the landing up air taking it from best or taking it from column best nest once again on a tear up there getting column off of the ledge these players sort of still feeling each other out but column still floundering to find this kill on this top level player defense i do i do like the uh patience that Column has had in this match. He's not dying really early, but he's losing neutral too often. And here, off stage, PK flat. Oh, sorry, uh, PK Thunder there connecting. Yeah, no. Column still having trouble getting off of this ledge against Best Nest. Best Nest uh, showing like these stubby hitboxes. They're coming out fast. Doesn't matter how stubby they are if you do not have the space to get away from them. Double PK flash mix up while hanging on the ledge. And Bessness still gets around college Column's edge setups. And Column's right back on the ledge. That back air off of the jump out of PK fire. Going to take this stock and the crew battle for DPU. Yeah, Bessness, obviously the absolute X factor for Team Davenport in this game against one of our best crews in this crew in this major league right now yeah and not to slouch on cmu several of their players putting in some crazy work has his bowser with some explosive play and superheroes fox earlier in this crew battle but best nest just showing that he's on a completely different level and he's prepared to play like it yeah it's uh after after this dominant victory because we didn't see best nest at all i believe week one uh week two he's unveiled and he's just as dangerous as we expected yeah if not more exactly like said, talk about vods to study i'm sure that best nest has mountains and mountains of game play of his gameplay footage out there for all of the other teams to look at and he can still just play at a level where it doesn't matter how much they watch. Yeah, what a what a game one uh, to our Tech Chase Major League week two. We've got two more matches on this channel that we're streaming right now. Um, and uh, me and my boy. Yeah, intent here. I uh, are super excited to be with you uh, and uh, just so excited for these next couple matches. Yeah, if you turned in late to that uh, crew battle, you missed quite a bit. Best Nest was able to seal it for DPU, but there was a long stretch of time in that battle where it looks like where it looked like it was going to be curtains for the DPU squad. Yeah, yeah, it was such a it was such a massive shift in momentum as soon as best Ness entered the field yeah and there's got to be something said for the the mental damage delivered when uh the the captain v captain match happens and one of them gets swept so it looks like our next match will be msu versus oakland yeah, this is going to be another 2-0 versus 2-0 game, if I recall correctly. Unless uh, they've been playing on the other streams and 
that may have changed. Let me check. Yes, uh, it is. It is a two and O team, Oakland, uh, securing both of their wins in the first week, as well as MSU. So another, another one of these teams is going to take a one in their losses this week, yeah. and uh, it's interesting to see who it'll be. Although for both of these teams, it is their second match of the night for both. So these teams could both be coming in at 3-0 versus 3-0. That is a good point. That is an absolutely valid point. Yeah, so we have Oakland, who's probably coming off of facing against Kettering sometime soon, and MSU, who has probably finished playing against Ferris already and that happening on stream one and stream three respectively just looking what? into the again. What? Um, notice that there was the home team versus away team advantage and it looks like that happens for stage striking in the first game interesting that uh the two teams elected to end up going to a more neutral stage pick for the beginning of the last set because i feel like that's something you can leverage heavily yeah that's a that's a very good point each match um teams are assigned as a home or away team and the only thing that does impact is that uh that starter banning you know player one bans a stage first Player two, uh, sorry, the away team uh, gets two bans right in a row, and then the home team gets the last ban um, evening up. So that is a that is a uh, mind game in and of itself that uh, is interesting to see. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked to see this uh, this second set. Because there's a lot of names that I recognize from having visited Michigan myself. I may be an Ohio boy, but not a stranger just driving up to Michigan tournaments every once in a while. And I'm seeing yeah. on the MSU side we yeah. have on the MSU side we have Hawk on Ike. I've seen quite a bit of his play in doubles, especially. But apparently, in the crew battles last week, he took out an entire team on his own. Yeah, yeah, that's another player that we have to mention who had an absolute dominant run. I believe he was noted as our player of the week on our kickoff, which is absolutely huge. Um, that team is absolutely stacked easily. Probably our number one seeded team, crew battle-wise. I mean, it's interesting yeah. to see the, uh, you know, the hierarchy develop as we go in further in tech chase major league yeah and i would say hard not to end up being the player of the week when you sweep an entire team on your own and there were there were players who were taking six seven stocks all by themselves last week it seemed like everybody left and right at least one person each team kind of popped off really uh it's it's crazy you know nobody really stood up to putting the team on your back like hawk did but uh you know maybe maybe we could see a a a, a repeat from hawk tonight yeah no that's something to be noted mentally for all of the players as individuals it's just not a solo game when you have a crew battle i've noticed that a lot of players play a lot better when they have the uh, the idea that there's other people counting on them, and sometimes people just are not accustomed to that kind of pressure. It just depends on what kind of squad you're running with, uh, the mental game you want to play with that team dynamic. Yeah, that that is a that is a very good point, um, especially in that first game that we watched, CMU versus Davenport. Uh, starting off really strong. We had the team of CMU, and then it seemed like Best Nest got in the game and put the team totally on his back. So yes, there are there is a large team dynamic, but when one player decides he's not going to die and he's going to take nine stocks, 
there can only be one winner. Yeah, when when someone on one of the sides of the team uh, develops protagonist syndrome in a in a <laughs> set, the anime music starts to play. Them. Yeah, the the an the anime character uh, shows up. So yeah, let's no. talk. Let's talk about uh, the rosters going into this. We touched on MSU and Hawk. On MSU, though, we do have Hawk, Linus, Nectar, Tojo, and Thomlet. Obviously, Linus, Hawks, you mentioned doubles. You can't mention doubles without mentioning Linus and Hawk. A dominant doubles team, and it looks like a dominant crew battle team as well. Yeah, no, like I was talking about with team dynamics earlier, these two accustomed to having dominant performances and doubles i've seen just the absolute nastiest stuff from both of them across several michigan tournaments i've entered and across even some ohio tournaments that they've traveled to on top of that uh we have nectar on the rob uh thomlet on the pt and tojo on palu these are players i haven't heard of but with a supporting cast uh around those two i'm sure that they're keeping good company i can't imagine that there's a weak link on that team no not at all this team is stacked for sure obviously nectar and tojo being from michigan hallmark names already but oakland let's talk about oakland for a second we've got spectral brawly Werbel nerfer saturn and meta little players yeah. Players that even being from Michigan after before week one, I didn't have a good sight on where they would lie in the hierarchy of it. But um, Oakland able to clutch out some wins last week for them uh, with the help of uh, specifically Meta. Meta put a lot of stocks in for his team right off the bat last week, um, as well as Spectral and Brawly. Um, doing some work as well uh, with the Lucina and the Roy, uh, respectively. Um, these are players that they, while while not showing up to a lot of Michigan uh, in-person tournaments or even some Wi-Fi tournaments that I that I've seen, uh, they do get quite a bit of use out of the online format, being Xanadu's Wi-Fi weeklies, which is which is a well-known uh weekly series obviously so not not slouches for sure against this msu team it's 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 hard to say how this is going to go in oakland it's all on oakland right now because if they come to play in this next match against msu we could possibly see an upset here that's not that's not out of the realm of possibility but yeah, msu might be the one seed but they're not invincible yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But MSU is about as close to an invincible team as we're going to get, really. If we're if we're being completely honest, Hawk last week going on an absolute tear. I'm bringing it up again because it was it was incredible. He just he just put the team on his back and they got the dub from it. I'm interested to see who is the um, you know, star player of both teams this 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 week yeah and as you were mentioning the team rosters i was gonna say spectral and broly those are names that i've heard before but not from michigan tournaments they've actually put up some pretty recent good results in these online uh xanadu tournaments like you were mentioning and these tournaments get like a lot of entrance so it's a huge deal to see somebody really showing up at those events yeah, Xanadu is absolutely a franchise at this point. And uh, showing up and getting, I believe it was 5th and 7th, um, being Spectral and Brawly respectively, um, are no, are is no easy feat, you know? Um, yeah, def definitely not anything to scoff at. So uh, these players, as they are, you know, filing in, uh, getting started, I have to mention... Uh, MSU being the home team with that little bit of advantage right off the bat, like we were talking about earlier, and Oakland, the away team. Um, 
yeah, I just it's super excited for Tech Chase Major League Week 2 going into this game to um, stay tuned. Now, before this starts, I have to ask, how long has, Ro has Linus been on Rosalina? Um, I, so at the in-person tournaments, I do know there was quite a long period where Linus was a Bowser main. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've known him most for Bowser, especially in doubles, and occasionally Zero Suit Samus. Yes, uh, in the past few months, I don't know exactly when this switch was, I'm not going to lie to you, but uh, over the last few months, Linus has transitioned to the uh, solo Rosa Rosalina Luma main, um, and uh, showing, showing lots of promise, especially last week, kind of kind of had a really good run as well um so yeah uh not a character that you see often in the meta uh obviously a character that uh was a lot better in smash 4 most would say yeah i i just want to be able to front load this rosalina is certainly not common but that also means that all of her tricks which i would say are some of the most effective i've seen in terms of neutral gameplay in Smash Ultimate, are very underexplored in terms of their counterplay. Um, there's a technique in Smash Brothers Ultimate called A canceling, where you cancel a dash attack into a jump or an aerial or a grab. But uh, we've got a little buddy as uh, Rosalina and Luma, which means the dash attack from Luma can continue, and you can have. Luma dash attack into Rosalina Nair into a huge desync combo, or even Luma dash attack forcing them to block into Rosalina grab while they're still in block stun. Wow. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely a niche character with a lot of underutilized tools. It's going to be really interesting if Linus gets into this match to see how Oakland is able to adjust their gameplay and around that Rosalina, Rosalina and Luma combo because it's not something you see every day and it's it's uh, it's something that can definitely take you by surprise. Yeah, I was misused the rest of their character roster. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to say par for the course, but Rob, PT, Palatina, these are characters you see coming out from other players, probably different play styles. But at the very least, like, somebody has played against the an Ike somewhere from the Oakland side. I refuse to believe that nobody on Oakland has Ike matchup experience. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned Palutena as well, probably one of the most popular characters, if not the, one of the most powerful characters in this game. Everybody's going to have a little bit of matchup experience here and there. It's down to the players to define themselves in their gameplay and how they mix up their their options so it doesn't come across like, oh, I've played this I've played this character before, so I should be able to do this no problem. You you, yeah, have, to, you have to be able to mix it up. You don't you don't wanna come off as the Palatina fresh off the shelf, nair nair loops for uh five bucks off of the dollar store shelf. <laughs> I bet you we will see some uh, $5 nair loops, though, tonight. Yeah, no. Uh, if it's not broken, don't fix it, obviously. <laughs> I think uh, I think from my perspective, it is a little broken, but maybe not in the way you're talking. <laughs> yeah, from the perspective of the person getting hit by it, it's a different kind of broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you are just joining us, uh, we just finished our game one of Tech Chase Major League week two. Uh, that was CMU versus Davenport. Both teams going in 2-0. After the fact, though, after Best Nest made it in there, uh, Davenport going up 3-0 over CMU dropping to a whopping 2-1. Um, that's big if you're CMU because, uh, you know, they, being the big dogs, being such a deep roster of very active Michigan players. It's got to be rough. And after that point, you have to go back to the drawing board and uh, go into go into your next games even stronger. 
Yeah. Uh, earlier tonight, we saw that crew battle, and CMU was off to quite the early lead with nine stocks to six, and Best Nest just Thanos gauntleted the entire rest <laughs> of CMU's team, uh, going 9 1 uh, stock wise. Yeah, so that was the story of our game one. Um, very hype stuff coming out from that game. But next, on your screen, you see we have MSU versus Oakland. Another gripping match coming up for you guys next. Yeah, another one of the 2 0 versus 2 0 games happening on stream two here. Uh, of course, there are two other streams as well. Uh, on stream one it appears that you're going to be seeing cmu moving over there to play uh cuaa the ann arbor team and on stream three davenport is moving over from our first game there to play aquinas soon so maybe also check out some of those teams although i do understand if you're here to see the 2-0 versus 2-0 matchup that we have slated here Yes, and it. Oh, both teams were able to clutch out their first games. Oak or their first games of the night. Uh, Oakland up over Kettering and MSU beating Ferris. So we're moving into a still undefeated mirror. Yeah, so it looks like these players are starting to uh, jump into the arena. We will be getting underway shortly. Um, these 3-0 and teams after their last match, that is even more dramatic than uh, maybe going in 2-0. You know what I mean? With, with uh... Yeah. Stakes on the line now as the 3-0 and undefeated title probably feels like it means a little bit more than the 2-0. and Yeah, absolutely. And... Uh... Uh, another thing, not just the standings with the 3-0, and because that's easy to flash in your face, but these players have not only won all their matches, they also just got done winning a match. So you're going yeah. to see confident players going into this next game with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, possibly. You know, these players are feeling undefeatable right now, and one of them is about to get defeated. Yeah, the you're going to see both teams at their fullest momentum. And it looks like we're just about ready. We have, uh, looks like Tojo selected for the MSU team versus Saturn on the CMU side. Looks like uh, CMU might all be using the same switch. Uh, I see the Werbs tag. Uh, seems like... We do, we will be uh, updating the uh, scorecard to reflect the uh, teams playing. Not to confuse anybody, it is actually MSU Yeah, Oakland MSU tonight. Oakland. Yeah, my, my bad. No, uh, it's Saturn, all good. Yeah, Saturn from the Oakland side and Tojo from the MSU side. Yeah, and uh, Oakland, another team that, uh, before we make another mistake like we did prior, um, Oakland, another team that plays all off of the same uh, switch. So you do see that Werbs tur the w Werbs tag there. Um, that is not actually Werble Nerfer, who is a Ken main on Oakland's team. That is actually Saturn, the Lucas player from Oakland, starting it off for Team Oakland, as well as we do have Tojo, the Palatina, five dollar nair loops for you, uh, yeah. ready to go, ready to go in here. Yeah, Oakland sending in uh, who I'd say is their their most obscure character on their side to start off with. Lucas, a uh, little less played, not any less good per se. He has quite a good projectile in that PK fire, and he has a couple of anti-approach tools with both Nair and Down Tilt. And I'd say uh, we're going to see a battle of can Palutena get in against uh, PK fire with her we massive also, disjoints to get something started. Yes, we're also seeing already right off the bat, Saturn very aware of Palutena's energy projectiles being side B and neutral B, um, both able to heal uh, 
Saturn in this situation, and that's really dangerous in most games, but it's extra dangerous in a crew battle where that percent is all... Oh, oh. <laughs> the neutral get up read, clearing out that stock a little bit early uh, for Tojo there. And now we get to see Palutena at her fullest potential where her opponent has to approach her and sort of deal with her ability to preemptively anti-air with the nair loops and catch these jump-ins. However, Saturn doing a great job at just poking away with forward airs. Yeah, it, uh, uh, he lost his stock very early and uh, in very dramatic fashion uh, being Saturn. Um, but it's not like he was playing from behind before that. It was one stray hit, and it looks like he's still fairly in control in this situation if he can finish off this stop. Yeah, and, you know, MSU's team might not be invincible, but it, Palu's back air and her dash attack both are. <laughs> and, Absolutely uh, are. We're just taking advantage of those. Uh, Saturn trying to preemptively stuff some options with a forward air or something and just getting a meaty shield straight into his face. There we see Tojo getting a couple punishes, baiting out a shield with a little bit of movement, getting some grab. That grab from Palatina is so good, leading to uh, forward air, back air, all sorts of options out of uh, grab. So that's something you're gonna have to look out for. But there we see Saturn with a grab of his own, yeah, speaking of grabs, Lucas with uh, three, four, I don't know, 25 maybe different kill throws out of his grab. <laughs> not, as, not as combo oriented, but at later percents, uh, it's something to be quite scared of. You don't need combos if your grabs take stops. Yeah. Ooh, down tilt two frame into back air. Palutena's down tilt has about a billion and a half active frames making it the perfect tool to just hang over the ledge and wait for somebody to run into it and confirm into that back air. Yeah, and here we see Tojo really starting to apply the pressure in in uh, set what appears to be Saturn's last stock if he isn't able to uh, make a little switch. And no, you see the power of Palutena and the power of Tojo on this character as well, just sort of outclassing Saturn in a lot of these interactions uh, in terms of how can Lucas deal with just raw Palutena dash attack? Does Lucas even have a button that can reach through Palutena's nair or get him past that giant up air in those juggle situations? And I'm thinking right about now, those are the questions that are running through Saturn's head because it doesn't look like he has much of an answer in this first game. Yeah, how do you how do you beat a move in neutral that has literal invincibility? Horrible nerf, uh, sorry, uh, Saturn trying to play a little more defensively, trying to hold onto the stock, see if he can find some openings, maybe a grab. Yeah, just one. Yes, that's perfect. Going into game or game two at the very least, it's not going to be a two stock lead, but just a one stock lead. Although that Zare does start quite a few nasty combos that I've seen for Lucas. Or, or uh, Saturn could have had quite the opening there. Although he's starting to bring it back, 49% on Tojo. We're back into this neutral situation, both players feeling each other out just a little bit here and there. Yeah, Tojo knows he's ahead in this situation and he's definitely playing like it. Uh, Saturn though, not dying. That was about the third dash attack that have hit. And at this point, Oh, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> how, how many times can the dash attack be, be mere pixels away from killing before uh, your luck runs out? And it looks like that was the final straw. MSU going to go up one stock. And like I said in the first game, that first game, hugely important to see who gets to play with that extra stock and potentially start a longer lasting lead. Yes, that going into going into the next stock, you know, erasing all that percent is so important, but it's not everything. As we saw in the last game, 
that first stock doesn't always predict what team is going to win. There is given play with uh, with how stocks go, and maybe maybe uh, we see a little bit of a switch around with Oakland here. Who do you think they're going to send in next? Um, let me take a look. On the Oakland side, we have quite a few characters, but I don't think any of them are as suited to play against Palatina as Shulk is. I think Shulk has quite a giant sword, and like I was saying with Lucas, thinking about what moves does Lucas have that can even reach through Palutena's Nair? Well, on the Oakland side, I see a character that has moves that definitely do reach through Palutena's buttons. Yes, if matchup if matchups are anything to go by, Shulk is the way to go in this situation, but only time will tell who Oakland decide to send in. They might know something that we don't. Yeah, no, Oakland, I think, actually has quite the variety of reasonable matchups. Uh, back back when I was a wolf main, before I was a joker main, before I was a commentary random whoever I want to play that day main, uh, uh, I didn't think that Palutena was too bad from wolf. Uh, definitely not the best matchup, but it is doable for sure. And it looks like Brawly agrees with me as he's stepping up to the plate to fight this one-stock Palutena. I'm interested to see whether we get the Wolf or the Roy. Sometimes I know, as a Palumane myself, that uh, sometimes swords can be a little dangerous if you're uh, Palutena with the reach that they have. We were talking about Shulk, but uh, maybe we see the Roy come out here. Yeah, Palutena has disjoints of her own, but I don't think any of them quite reach to the status of, like, sword range. Air, <laughs> air quotes around that. Yeah. Uh, so it, it can be easy for certain characters to sort of, like, stick a longer disjoint into uh, her anti-air attempts and sort of swat her out of the air for trying to do the same to you. Yeah, if you can stick a sword through that nair, through that encircling shroud that seems so powerful, uh, a lot of times it'll kind of annihilate a opponent who is focused on trying to use that nair and trying to space, trying to just throw moves out until they hit. Yeah, no, uh, I would say that Palutina is a character that has moves that are well suited to a lot of situations Nair is certainly a swiss army knife of its own good for rising to catch people's jumps in jump ins good for diving off stage to sort of bonk people out for recovering <laughs> bonk. Good, good good for comboing into itself six or seven or 25 times <laughs> But yes, I was correct. The uh, Roy going to be the choice for Brawly today. Yeah, Roy, uh, quite a powerful character of his own. Uh, he has these sweet spots and sour spots, and they all have like pretty unique traits, I would say, as well. Roy is a character most known, I would say, for his absurd kill power. And he has quite a few confirms to his name as well with uh, his Jair, the jab back air combo, <laughs> and Jide B as well. Uh, Roy side B, sweet spot, killing it like, what, 50 at ledge? Yeah, very, very ridiculous options. And that's really what you want going into this game. You want to even up those stocks if you're Oakland right now, because you don't want this to slip away from you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, both players, again, just feeling each other out for just a second before trying to get a really big opening. It looks like uh, Brawly's going to get the first one with that grab, up throw, up air. Both players not quite getting a super meaningful hit yet to start extending a lead into this one-stock game on the MSU side or potentially try and start lapping Oakland. And it looks like Tojo has got that. Ooh, okay, electing to go for the down tilt into the turnaround there. Not done with him yet, but the down throw back air. He's so far away, barely making it back. Back throw? Almost. Not gonna kill you. Again? All right, Brawly's back in there now, but not for long. The back air, 
just sweeping him off of that little bit of momentum he had on that platform extension, and he's out of there. That's another stock for MSU. Yeah, that's it's such a good return on investment for Tojo right off the bat, and then MSU as a whole. Tojo still in the driver's seat right now, trying to go for an edge guard there. Gets caught by Uppy. Yeah, no, it, I was talking about the dollar store Nair loops, but it looks like Tojo is taking Oakland to the four for three store, getting just a little bit of extra value off of that last stock that he had. Yeah, absolutely, but Brawley being able to turn that around, to turning a bad situation into a little bit of a brighter situation, really, because uh, that, uh, that first stock, losing that first stock was rough, but... If you lose more from there, it's just all the worse. Yeah, Tojo had quite some explosive, aggressive plays once the two had sort of felt out what they were going to try and do out of those tiny little buttons. It felt like what happened was um, in early situations, Tojo hit like a down tilt or uh, a forward air or something, and Brawly responded by trying to jump away and then in the very next situation tojo caught it and took brawley on that long ride that we saw for a while yeah the, calling out you know specifically that down tilt he got a lot of use out of that on the ledge as a two frame tool getting lots of confirms he we saw the down tilt on the ledge to the nair for a little extra damage there that can mean all the difference when you're in those situations where you're already ahead it feels like every every hit is extra credit when your team is ahead in a crew battle yeah and you you definitely gotta love those situations as the player who just managed to clutch out just that extra tiny little bit of value for your team it looks like next from the MSU side is going to be Nectar. Seeing quite a lot of the, the players that we didn't get to talk about earlier as Linus and Hawk dominated the conversation. Tojo showing us that there's a lot more to this team than just that doubles partner, or than just those doubles partners. Yeah, you absolutely can't talk about MSU without talking about their depth of players on it. You know, you've got a You've got a good matchup spread, and you've got great players. This MSU team right now is looking almost unstoppable. Let's see what Brawley has to say about that. Not to miss the little things, but this is my favorite Rob skin. I love him very much. <laughs> he's, he's a he's a little little cherry boy. He's large, and he's also red. Yeah, no, I, I aesthetics wise, I gotta say, I love all of the black and red skins in this game. That's uh, those are the ones that I usually play. Both of them just bobbing to the beat. I wish that I had just a tiny bit of beatboxing skills to make this situation <laughs> like flip worthy. I'll work on it for uh, hopefully the next time I get to play. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Speaking of looking forward to it, Brawly. Uh, that 30 second mark hit, and he's already in there. Two forward air into the, or two nairs into the forward air. Quick little string. Yeah, Brawley is looking to even this up, but not if Nectar has anything to say with it. With the jab reset and the side B stage, that'll kill. Absolutely killed Nair into side B. It is a true combo coming from Rob. Right. right, Rob, all of these large sort of lingering hitboxes that come from above, especially that Nair, it's very difficult to deal with for a lot of characters because you just fall on top of them and you get to be safe and Rob just gets to go into these down tilt loops and that's not even mentioning the two very powerful projectiles. However, unfortunately, Nectar ran out of recovery sauce down there and lost one of his stocks for it. Brawly going on the aggressive once again, Nair into forward air. Yeah, Brawly trying to pin down Nectar right now. Nectar has the use of the projectiles right now, and that can be a thorn in the side against a character without a reflector like Roy. 
Brawley had those two forward airs just a second earlier and went for the back air. However, Bra or Nectar just went over the top. Unfortunate little situation as Brawley committed to trying to get the kill. However, Brawley trying to get off the ledge now. That down throw confirming into the up air, not quite killing. This forward tilt almost killing off the ledge. Looks like Roy's having a little bit of trouble dealing with the gyro. Down tilted off the stage. Nectar rolls in, gets punished by a back air. Not losing the stock though. Sometimes it can feel like a, a massive physics equation trying to deal with where uh, Rob is placing the gyro, but that Roy side B super killing once again, probably would have killed 100% earlier than it did in that spot. Now it looks like Nectar's really trying to get this kill right now, and that can be really dangerous in these situations. He needs to keep a calm head, but that parry up slash is going to take it. Still a only a one stock difference between these teams right now. Yeah, parry is on point. Brawley going even stocks wise, three for three. MSU maintaining just a small lead. This Rob, however, not to be understated, I think Rob is especially one of the more powerful characters to go into this one stock situation because specifically of those zoning tools and how hard it can be to break him. And even if he's at one stock behind, like, it's a crew battle. Somebody's got to be taking the stocks. And if Nectar can commit to playing very passively and very patiently, he may be able to take them to the four for th or the three for four store once again and just eke out that extra little bit of value once again for MSU. Yeah, it's really interesting. You mentioned the projectiles just now. There's not a single character that uh, a player mains on Oakland right now that's left with a reflector. Yeah, I. I hesitate to say that Roy might have been a mistake, but had Brawley gone in against Rob rather than Palutena, I think we might have seen the Wolf rather than the uh, Roy. Yeah, and and it's interesting. It, absolutely. Um, obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty, and you can't say, "Oh, my opponent is going to come in next," uh, and he was definitely focused on just deleting that Toto stock, but. In the, in the time between now and then, Nectar has been able to hold on to the lead for MSU as we go into this next game. Only two, only two players remain on the Oakland side, and only two and a third players remain on the MSU side. Yeah, like I said, that one stock can be a huge decider sometimes. Like I said, this is the same exact lead going in from the last game set like both players were on player two and a quarter whatever for both teams <laughs> now and msu still maintains that tiny stock lead that they got from uh tosho taking down saturn yeah one thing i think about in situations like this um is chess in chess the mindset is if you are ahead you don't need to be going out and trying to make uh, two big two-for-one deals. You know what I mean? You don't have to work that hard to continue your success. All you have to do is trade and force your opponent to trade. And in this situation, if MSU stays going three stocks for three stocks going into these next matches, they still come out the winner. Obviously, if you're MSU, you want to be further ahead than this right now because things can shift so drastically in a crew battle in the matter of seconds in a game that, you know, you do want that safety net ahead of you. We'll see although, what happens. Though continuing on that chess analogy, you got to think one of the more powerful players on the Oakland team that we were just talking about trading for some of i don't want to say lesser but not some of the the all-stars that we've seen again hawk took an entire team out on his own it's hard to not imagine that that's the queen on msu's side in this uh in this analogy <laughs> absolutely absolutely 
Um, there are three players left to possibly be picked by MSU. I'm going to go out on a limb, and it's it's a pretty big one. Um, <laughs> MSU is probably not going to be subbing in Thomlet tonight. I'm assuming that the Twins, Linus and Hawk, will be the ones to uh, duke it out in these last two stocks. And if Oakland doesn't have any... Sorry, sorry. Uh, Nectar is still here. If Oakland gets an answer to Nectar and the, the Linus and Hawk are left, they also have to deal with possibly the MVPs on the team. Yeah, no, it's definitely nothing to scoff at. Those two players, just a super high caliber, not only in doubles like we were mentioning earlier, but here in this single crew singles crew battle format. Sorry, a little bit of <laughs> mush there. Yeah, it's, it's all good. Um, I'm, I'm so excited for this next match, though. This is going to be a really deciding moment. Um, Oakland opting to send in Werble Nerfer. Werble Nerfer doing some work for his team last week, too. Hopefully that uh, those early kills will come into effect for Oakland, and we'll be able to reset this to a 6-6, and uh, more excitement coming, the, coming your way. Uh... Oakland approaching the problem of how do you beat this very projectile based sort of like Wally -e character. <laughs> very... Wally. -e. <laughs> oh no, the train of thoughts gone. <laughs> I I absolutely you... apologize. Oh no, it's all right. Uh uh, tiles walls. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, MS or uh, Oakland answering the question of. What do I do about this sort of like brick wall of a character in front of me? Uh, answer coming up well. Use a character that uh, has a very vortex based sort of advantage state where once they're in, they're never leaving, like Ken. Yeah, the Shoto specifically known for their insane combo potential and early kills coming out. Yeah, tons of mix-ups in their uh, combo trees for sure. We see that up tilt into the crescent kick, a Tatsu into down tilt, like 50% off of just that tiny opening that he got. Definitely just a ton of damage coming off of this character. Yeah, that not air almost. Excuse me? Not only was that a ton of damage coming out, it also put Werble Nerfer in a position where, you know, Shoryo, Shoryu is going to start killing right now. It has been for about, you know, 60% as well. So uh, yeah, just and... winning this kill is going to be key. Werble Nerfer trying to pay, pay, play patient right here. Very smart strategy, and there we see it. Yeah, just like you mentioned, up tilt, up tilt for that shield pressure. Nectar likely trying to jump out of shield, just get out of dodge, doesn't want hit with one of those nasty shield break setups from Ken. And Werble Nerfer with the foresight to know it's sure you can time. Uh, you're getting anti-aired. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very that was a very clutch moment for Werble Nerfer, not letting his team go down, and in the process, evening it up for his team. He's got yeah. some bosses to deal with now, though. He's got the big baddies of MSU coming up, Linus or Hawk. Interesting to see who they send in here. Werble able to uh, find find the correct position, maybe take uh, that hanging pawn and restore the balance of uh, this 6-6 six, six, two-player versus two-player crew battle now. Good stuff, though, to Nectar. Uh, I think trading evenly three uh, for whatever. Uh, uh, either way, regardless of stocks taken, Nectar showed off quite some good gameplay against uh, Brawly. Yeah, absolutely. Able to end end two game, get through two games, live, survive long enough for his team to make it an even game, and uh, now now. It's interesting to see who MSU is going to send in. Honestly, with with the dominant performance that Hawk had last week, it would be hard to say, don't send in Hawk. But I can say matchup experience-wise, I feel like Rosa is going to have a little bit of an easier time 
keeping Ken out and just trying not to interact with him as much as possible. If you're not at oh. arm's length against Ken, you're usually not going to die to him. Yeah, no, it looks like MSU deciding that the answer to keep out that Vortex-based sort of heavy mix-up character in Ken is to put him at sword's length with Hawk. Uh, I, I giggled a little Hawk and Linus sharing a setup, giving us no information about which player was coming up. However, <laughs> the, the graphic changing, uh, revealing that for me. Yeah, it's 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 always funny when uh, you know we saw CMU all being on the same switch. We see Oakland all being on the same switch. It can be a little difficult without us, uh, you know, speculating too much who each player is, even during the matches sometimes. Yeah. Luckily, I don't think I didn't check fully, but I don't think any of our teams have character overlap between players yeah no none of the teams that we commentate tonight at least having character overlap it looks like we're getting into it with hawk versus warble nerfer another even game we're gonna have the the 30 seconds at the start electing to go to small battlefield for this they're they're just gonna we're gonna long range fist bump each other real quick. <laughs> okay, now, now we're moving. Both players just just stretching out before they they, uh, they have to fight. Full calisthenics, you know. It's important get that get that heart rate up, get the limbs loose and limber. And uh, here we go, starting off six six. This is a very defining moment right now. Yeah, and it looks like Verbal Nerf are kind of taking the approach of like, well, if he's going to try and zone me with a sword, I'm going to use fireballs. However, Hawk has already taken a couple tiny little openings for himself. All right, what can Verbal Nerf do off of this? Looks like Hawk getting back to ledge and sort of forcing his way back onto the stage a little bit. There's an opening for Verbal though. Here we see Hawk with all the stage pressure in the world right now. We yeah, see no, the... I think certainly a character capable of exuding a lot of presence, to, especially with these platforms at just the right height for neutral air to be able to cover both above and below them. Focus there, getting a Werbel Nerfer out of a sticky situation, only taking the damage from that. Good stuff from him being aware of that situation and being able to get out of it. Now we see Hawk with the up tilt able to secure that kill for his team. Only 88%, but that's enough for for sure you to start killing. And uh Ooh. Yeah, Verbal trying the same exact setup that worked at the at the end of Nectar's stock last game. However, Hawk not amused, just holding shield knowing you're not going to go for the shield break variation this time. You're going to try and end my stock off in anti-air. It's that extra little between players data, that extra dialogue and information given to both players. Werbel, though, shielding that perhaps poorly spaced back air into the up smash. Both these players down a stock now. However, Werbel quite a bit of percent behind. Although it's no problem making that up for Ken. Good use of the Hodoken on ledge, catching Hawk, trying to recover high, but there we see the up air going to finish off Warble Nerfer's stock. Oh, that setup! Oh, he didn't get the true sure you can input, so it didn't kill. It but might have been the game. Oh, Warble Nerfer, though, with the presence just to take a deep breath, get another opening, and even this out at 0-0 zero, zero on the third stock. Yeah, for a player who last week went through an entire team, Hawk is having a little bit more problem against Warble Nerfer's Ken here. Let's see who's able to clutch out this game. Yeah, Warble showing up majorly in this do-or-die situation for sure. Uh, with already two stocks off of Hawk, the last week's MVP overall for the league. We see both these players 
playing very patiently, playing fairly passively, but here we see some damage coming out from Werble. Hadoken barely missing the jump off ledge. All right, Hawk getting a little bit more footing, holding that center stage position, landing a neutral air, and now Werble was in the air for just a brief second, and now they're off stage. Okay, that was an interesting bait. It looked to me like Hawk just like failed to fall through the platform for that uh down or for that neutral B. Uh -huh. However, Hawk had different plans. Not a whole lot of lag on that move. You thought that he was still going to be on the platform charging that, didn't you, Werble? Yeah, Smart I... play from Hawk. Yeah, what it was it was it was bait after bait to we saw him get a punish on a focus uh, bait originally to get Werble Nerfer off stage. And then we saw that set up off the platform, getting that back or securing that kill, being able to hold on to that stock. I'm assuming that Hawk is going to be able to possibly take another one here too. So really good return on investment for Hawk, even though he's not going on quite the tear we're seeing yet. <laughs> um, as we saw last week, still a very valuable member of team msu all of these players playing not not tremendously you know flashy not like we saw that first week with that breakout uh game the breakout games with hawk but just a solid overall a uh, flow between all of these players everybody has gone i believe even if not better in their matches thus far so msu uh you know team consistency at this point going into this last uh last player for oakland yeah if i if i recall correctly so far the only differentials are hawk taking that game over werble nerfer uh on the msu side and msu's initial victory from tojo uh as well as Werble Nerfer able to uh, take Nectar stock before losing one of his own. Very even crew battle so far. Definitely some fearsome play coming from both sides. Werble showing up in that do or die situation, doing quite a bit of damage to Hawk, who was a massive threat for sure. And now we see anchoring for Team Oakland here. Needs to really clutch up right now for Team Oakland. He's spectral with the Lucina, I'm assuming. Um, that's a lot of weight to put on to be the anchor when you are behind, but it's not out of the realm of possibility for spectral to get this first stock down from Hawk and then possibly try and chip away at the uh, very light Rosalina and Luma. Yeah, Rosalina and Luma, I mentioned all of those mix-ups they have, but uh, how do those work if Luma just gets hit off stage by a big old stick from Rosa or from uh, Lucina? Rosalina tr traditionally not faring the best, especially against sword characters specifically. Yeah, that's, that's really important because the mind games going into this with having that Lucina for the anchor is really good if spectral is able to take this stock from hawk we've seen hawk you know tank stocks game after game after game before and uh spectral needs to find an answer to that right now for his team however on the other hand for spectral you have to imagine lucina being a character who doesn't necessarily have a deep bag of tricks and is an especially common character i would believe fighting an uphill battle with these very experienced players. wonder what stage they're going to go to. Um, my guess is they're probably just going to go to a biplat PS2 uh, small battlefield. I think the sortie dittos don't really end up being that stage dependent a lot of the time. Although I, I can't imagine Spectral wants to let Hawk onto Battlefield specifically just because uh, of Ike's Nair extensions off of those platforms. 
Yeah, that Nair is such a brutal tool. We saw a ton of that in the match against Wervil Nerfer with the Nair into up airs. We were seeing quite a bit, but there Hawk was able to think a little bit ahead of that. You know, we saw focus come into play and he was able to go for the go for the Nair, wait a second and then get a punish after the fact and that's really important once you're once your opponent knows you're going for something specific to switch it up and still be able to get that damage for your team yeah that is certainly the mark of a more experienced or perhaps higher level player uh able to adapt and sort of innovate on the fly in terms of what your game plan again is against what your opponent is doing just opening your eyes, taking a look, and adapting to whatever habits they're showing you. It can be rather difficult, especially in a game that is as fast as Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. However, Hawk showing us that he has a pretty good handle on the adaptation aspect of this competition. Here we are at another pivotal moment in our game two of week two of Tech Chase Major League. We got a lot of great schools out here. Specifically right now, you're seeing MSU versus Oakland in the final stages of, uh, you know, their, their three uh, or their 4-0 or 3-1 match right here. So uh, a lot of the, yeah. a lot on the line going into this these last altercations not to mention all of the other incredible matches one we saw earlier tonight on this stream and all of the others happening on the other two streams but let's not dwell on that let's get into this game between spectral and hawk perhaps the last game of this series if spectral isn't able to take down the one stock that hawk has remaining battlefield the unexpected pick from my uh, perspective, I think he gets a whole lot off of having these extra platforms. However, on the other hand, Lucina is a character with some powerful juggles, and these platforms can get in the way of landing situations, especially for bigger, heavier characters like Ike. Yes, um, Spectral, very confident in their decision to go to this stage despite what the uh you know what on paper it looks like both these players can get a lot off of these platforms and it's going to be it's going to be uh, a juggle whether whether they want to you know who who's going to be doing the juggling spectral showing perhaps a little bit of why they might have chosen this stage with that upbeat out of shield going up to the third platform that hits behind him? Excuse me? There was such an insane coverage of tech options there on that platform. Just yeah. putting so I've much... never seen that setup. Yes, it's such a huge hitbox. Yeah, just the, uh, what was that, neutral air into the aether charge on the tech chase on that platform. Talk showing that even if people think of Ike as a, as a more straightforward sort of a square block round hole kind of character uh yeah tricks yes absolutely but here we see hawk actually really in a bad spot 145 percent against spectral's relatively low 64 percent um spectral playing trying to get this kill right now wants to even it up give it a 3-3 against msu one of the strongest teams in our league right now. Aether super armoring through the F tilt that would have certainly killed there. Both these players just trying desperately to hold on to their stocks, but that dash attack just barely clipping just the tip of that sword into Spectral's face. Another super armor situation there. That Aether forward or er, armoring through the forward air. Now we're seeing Hawk try and take off. However, feels himself just a little too much and that f smash gets out of shielded by an f smash of spectral's own spectral losing that stock but not losing the set so far look 
looks like we're going to get the chance to see MSU's last player on their roster this week. Yeah, so we've got guaranteed, almost guaranteed, I guess Thomlet is still a factor potentially, but I'm assuming we are going to see Linus with the Rosalina and Luma. You don't even have to switch uh, your switch out right now because Hawk and Linus are on the same switch right now, ready to go. We should be right back into this. Yeah, just going to discuss the stage counter picks for a second and see right back into this game. Again, if you've joined us late, you've missed quite an electric set so, set so far with MSU, the dominant team, kind of getting a little bit more than they expected out of the Oakland team, I'm sure, down to a two versus three situation stock-wise. Linus, though, Always. instead of going for the uh, Rosalina Luma, possibly a matchup situation, Bowser fares much better against Swords than Rosalina and Luma do. Yeah, perhaps concurring that uh, they do not want to have to deal with uh, uh, just losing their Lumas and being, uh, in my opinion, a more subpar character without that extra little uh, bit of hitbox to go with all of their already okay tools Luma definitely being the factor that sets Rosalina over the edge in a lot of situations yeah, Linus preparing the up smashes I, I can imagine this is a stressful situation for Spectral for sure only having two stocks against such another powerful player, having to clutch this out for the Oakland team if they want to maintain their undefeated status, especially against the number one seed in this tournament, or in this uh, league situation. Yeah, and here we see Spectro actually doing a very good job at the start of this, playing very defensively. He knows he has one more stock than his one less stock than his opponent and he's got to levy that right now he he definitely has to make something happen for sure and it looks like linus is content to just kind of like abuse being this giant body that has a whole extra stock killing early living longer than spectral Yes, it was a it was a very good decision so far in this match to go with the Bowser because it, it looks like it's paying off. Ooh, oh, let's get that attack. Linus with all the percent in the world to play around with this. It is definitely the ball is definitely in his court right now. That Linus is the... going for a couple Randy F smashes here and there. Looks like they just want to get this over with. They don't want to hear us talking about how hard it's going to be for Spectral. They just want to hear us talking about how MSU maintains their undefeated status. Yes, and here we see Spectral very much in kill percent right now. Does not want to get any stray hits, but there we see the Nair. Tries to catch it with another F smash. Doesn't connect. Spectral has that scouted, but not the down air. Just the aggression from Linus in that whole situation. The Nair into the back air kill attempt. Into the F smash kill attempt. Into just down airing out of disadvantage. Linus wanted blood. They did not want to have that game continue any longer where Spectral could have potentially got their footing. Oakland showing up tonight for sure, but MSU just leveraging their higher caliber players at the end to make sure that they stay undefeated. Not the biggest of deficits between these two teams at the end of the day. 2-0 is not something that I would have called for MSU, but it is a dub, and that is going to put a four in their wins bracket. Yeah, no. And definitely nothing to be sad about from the Oakland side. Certainly drawing blood from what seemed like an unbeatable team going into this set. 
And I do believe with that, uh, we do have one more match tonight um, coming at you very soon. But I do believe we will be taking a quick break uh, momentarily for Tech Chase Major League Week 2. Yeah, just a quick five for everybody to take a deep breath, untense their jaws, which I'm sure everybody is grinding, and go grab a sip of water, probably. Yes, so all, the gamers, all... all the gamers in the chat right now, do me a huge favor, take a sip of water, get a little hydration, you got a little bit of time right now. Make yourself comfortable, though, because uh, we do have a banger of a match coming up next. We have Ferris versus Concordia University, Ann Arbor. <laughs> 